Following their escape from a band of half-human, yellow-skinned savages, Tarzan and his friends take to an underground river in a dugout canoe, which carries them beyond a chain of mountains. Because of a waterfall, the party is forced to land and abandon their dugout. While seeking a means of reaching the river below the falls, they are ambushed and captured by a second party of yellow giants. Mounted on elephants, the entire company is transported to a distant walled city in the depths of the jungle. Upon their arrival, the ape man and his friends are left in a strongly guarded building, while Mungo, leader of the yellow men, goes to report to Atea, queen of the giant savages. During his absence, the captives are discussing the possibility of escape when the door opens and the giant Mungo re-enters with instructions to conduct the captives before the queen. We are ready, Mungo. Lead the way. Uh, uh. You come. What the devil? This ain't the door we came in. Careful of pitfalls, Tarzan. It looks harmless enough for work. Near a stone stairway, probably leading to the roof. To the top of the wall. This house is built against the outer wall. At least we'll have a good view of this very interesting city, my friends. Couldn't we tackle Mungo Tarzan and make a try at getting away? It's dark enough to try scaling the outside of the wall. Once in the jungle... Mm, we would be retaken almost immediately, Monsieur O'Rourke, and probably killed out of hand. Yes, pro probably. Handling Mungo would not be so difficult, O'Rourke, were he alone. Look over there beside that watchtower. A dozen or more guards are waiting for us. Yes, and besides, Terry, well, the top of this wall must be all of 30 feet from the ground. Oh, well, it was just a thought anyway. If we leave things to Tarzan, Monsieur O'Rourke, our chances for escape will be far better. It is unfortunate that we could not have dined before this audience with her savage majesty. One dies so much better on a full stomach. Oh, Dr. Wong, how can you joke at a time like this? Dreadful woman will probably have us all murdered sent before her entertainment. <laughs> With the inner man well satisfied, my child, death should not be difficult to meet. However, it was a mere figure of speech. I should not worry too much about this queen. Mais non, mademoiselle, pas du tout. I have been in much worse situation with Tarzan, and we have always won through. As you Americans say, let us not cross the bridge until we reach it, n'est-ce pas? Speaking of bridges, we seem to be crossing a sort of causeway or stone bridge leading to that central building. Well, we didn't see this from the edge of the valley, or even when we came into the city. It's on the opposite side from which we came in, behind that high round tower. What sort of building do you suppose that is, the tower in the center? Couldn't have been built by these people. Nor by any others, Jeanette. It is an excellent example of nature's own work. What it represents to these uh, savages would be difficult to surmise. Well, we'll probably find out very soon. We seem to be going there, or at least to the building surrounding it. Mm, the palace of the queen, I suppose. I think so. I don't know what else it could be unless there are dungeons for us. Imagine. All this in the very heart of what we call darkest Africa. If it weren't for all those half-clothed, gigantic, yellow-skinned people, one might very easily imagine oneself in one of the older European cities. There are more things in heaven and Africa than are dreamed of in white man's philosophy, my friend. That is very true, Monsieur Doctor. Very true. But this queen, Atea, we are about to interview. As ruler of such a place as this, she cannot be entirely a survive. Exactly my thought, Lieutenant. I believe we are to be very greatly surprised. I wonder what sort of woman we'll find. Probably be some huge yellow-skinned Amazon, like the rest of these women. I'm thinking, of course, your question will be answered immediately. We're coming to the palace, or whatever this pile of rock represents. Whoa! Mungo! By Joe Wong, look at those gates. On chains. The place is almost impregnable. That way, sir. That is true. Against anything but modern siege guns. Baruch Tarzan. Not far now to Atea. You go in. Come. Darno, does this place remind you of another place you've seen not so long ago? 
these wide corridors, this high ceiling. You mean the temple of Ashir? Yes. There isn't much difference between that and this. Where those corridors were gloomy and dark, these are well lighted. And there are guards all over this place. And you see the pictures painted on the walls, hunting scenes, battle scenes, just like those in Ashir. Yet there is a difference, mon ami. The Heziherians were descended from the Egyptians. These people are... Bien le bon Dieu, I don't know what. As O'Rourke says, Darno, we'll find that out soon enough. Those doors we are coming to at the end of the corridor. The guards have opened them. Arriving at the open doorway, the guards surrounding the captives halt. Led only by Mungo, Tarzan and his friends enter a large, brightly lighted chamber. Crossing it, they approach a low platform. Seated in a sort of throne on the platform is the glamorous, veiled figure of a woman. To right and left of the dais stand several giants dressed in short leopard skin tunics. At the waist of each hangs a long double-edged sword. In silence, Mungo and his captives approach the foot of the dais where they halt. The seated woman rises slowly, lifts the long veil covering her entire form, and drops it at her feet. A little gasp of stunned surprise from each member of the white group as they stand and stare in amazement at the regally magnificent figure before them. The heavy veil, as it falls to the ground, discloses a form covered with a clinging gauze-like robe of white, cut to reveal arm, shoulder, throat, and breast of soft, ivory-tinted skin. A rope of diamonds encircles a slim waist. On small feet are sandals fastened with studs of gold. The woman's eyes are large and deep-set, dark and shadowy. A broad and noble brow, on which hair, blue-black as a raven's wing, grows low. The face is delicate with straight features. Surpassingly beautiful as Artea is, her face has stamped upon it a look of unutterable experience, of deep grief, of evil passions. For a long, silent moment she stands, gazing thoughtfully, first at one, then the other of the white group. Presently, in a voice soft and alluringly husky, she addresses them. How come you strangers to the place of the yellow men? And what do you want here? How is it that you hold your lives so worthless as to place them in the hands of Atea, queen of Thor? You ought to know how we came. Thor? By Jove, did you hear that one? She said, Thor, is it possible that we've been brought to... To the city we were seeking? Not only is it possible, Major, but very, very probable. You say I ought to know how you came? Why? Because we were brought here by Mungo. Ask him. I do not know. I ask the question of you, stranger. And I repeat, I do not know. Who are you? I am Tarzan of the Apes. Tarzan of the Apes. I do not understand. You are seemingly a man. Since when have men become apes? I am king of the tribe of Kerchak. I have never heard of such a tribe. So, so you are a king. A king who wears only a leopard skin for covering. And who are these others? Friends, under my protection. Under your protection, you say. You believe yourself able to protect them, as well as yourself from Atea? Why not? I shall answer that question later. Perhaps. The woman there, is she your mate, Tarzan? No. Why do you lie to Atea? I do not lie. There is no reason for it. Speak, woman. Who are you? I am Jeanette Burton. You are Tarzan's mate. Speak the truth, lest you regret it. Tarzan answered that question, I tell you. However, no, I am not. Hmm, yet you are not without some beauty of face and form. And this Tarzan is a man. <laughs> but no matter. You there with the narrow expression of eyes, who are you? I, gracious queen, am called Wong Tai. I am a doctor of science. Of what country are you? You do not resemble these others. I come from a country called China, Oatea. I have heard of it. It is a great distance from Thor. What are you seeking here? My colleagues and I, uh, pardon, Major Burton Ashley, Sharon Thorok, and Jeanette Burton, we were searching for the same city, Thor, when we became lost in the jungle. We were found by Tarzan and Lieutenant Dano. But we were under the impression 
That Thor was a city of ancient ruins. Ancient it is, Wong Tai. But ruins? Thor has stood as you see it now, peopled by a strong race of men for many generations. My house has governed here for a thousand years. I am the last of my line. When I die, if without an heir, the next ruler will be one of these yellow men. And how is it, O oh Queen, that you speak English? The rulers of Thor have always spoken English. Many of my subjects speak it, as does Mungo, chief of my warriors. But enough for the present. Mungo! Wait a minute, Atea. What are you going to do with it? You will be quartered here in the palace. Until I have decided what I shall do with you. Decide now. You are anxious to leave Thor. Who comes? One chief. Slomen Thongo. He come from cave to talk at here. Let him enter. Antu Awongo Thongo. Hikari Tarzan. One of the clawfoot devils. Yes. Listen. Tuk tu wa gambo erok. Gambo nukwa tongo. Mumbo tukwa awonga ana look. Look, Uncle Jim. Look, he's pointing at Tarzan and you and Terry. Teddy, my dear. And this man, Tongo, chief of my outer guard, says that you, Tarzan of the Apes, and these others kill many of his men. Is it true? Yes. According to the laws of Thor, a chief has the right to avenge the death of any of his men in personal combat with him who has slain them. I cannot change the law, Tarzan. Tongo claims that right of you. When is it to be and where? Here, Tarzan, and now. I had hoped to keep you here with me. But Tongo will kill you. He is a mighty warrior. I am not worried about him. Let him take care of himself. Dono, step back with Jeanette. The rest of you, back to the wall. You have a weapon, Tarzan of the Apes? Yes. Then defend yourself. And may the gods of Tongo protect you. Aruk, Tongo! With a howl of rage, the yellow giant grasps his heavy cudgel in both hands, swings it high above it.